Activity, strength up by one, writing letters, blah, blah, blah. Let him help. Vincent likes that. And my reputation is going up. Awesome. Delicious is going up by two. I just need my reputation to keep going up. Tending guests. All right. Keeping my diligence up. Good. I wait for a moment to say something, but all he does is look at me. It's unnerving, and I want this, nothing more than to run away. Nice. I bow slightly and then wait for him to address me, making sure to give him my full attention. I won't let him intimidate me. Lord Sander holds silence for another long moment and then relaxes slightly. Well, you certainly are more composed than you were at the dinner I had with Eloy. That's a topic I'd really rather not recall, and I believe that Lord Sander knows it. I keep my calm and treat this as a test. If I'm going to win his little game, I have to pretend that nothing he says or does bothers me. Yes, your lordship. And that's all you have to say on the matter? I can elaborate if you wish, your lordship. All right, enough of your lordship. St I understand I asked you to learn to etiquette, but I wanted to have a conversation with you person to person, not ma master to servant. I hesitate, not sure if this is a way of testing my resolve or not. Then logic kicks in and I decide that probably isn't the case. I go ahead and drop the formalities for the time being. Fine. Anyway, I should have summoned you earlier, but it's hard. Alright. Skip, skip, skip. Alright. Um, yeah. Let's keep going. I still like this schedule a lot. My reputation's still going up. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm playing Total Days 51. I feel like I'm in much better shape right now. Comment on how focused Kamal seems. Good. Relationship with Kamal is going... Well, this was such a cute scene. The whole children and Kamal scene was actually one of my favorites so far. Okay, our diligence is going up and all of the other stuff. So it seems like the these abilities, strength, etiquette... Um, Phrase him sarcastically. It seems like strength, etiquette, awareness, tidiness, those are the ones that are used to help pass skill checks for reputation. And then diligence, charisma, education, and management, that is for the actual people that you're trying to romance, is how I'm sort of like seeing this. So let's continue with this schedule. Great, strength plus one, reputation. Yeah, um, you're just being realistic. That's what I said last time. My reputation is 22. All right. I, I mean, now that I, I it's I, I kind of like that they game over you like midway through the game, partway through the game, so they don't like wait till the very end to tell you, yeah, you didn't quite make it. That way you can start again from the beginning earlier. Um, so I like that. Good. Okay. So now, I think we're in a very, very good place. Yeah, I think we're in a very good place. Let's save that again. I'm going to overwrite that save. And we can probably ease up on the diligence, I guess. Um, well, I mean... Here, we'll do tidiness, attend guests, haul luggage, gardening, and then um, no, I mean, let me let me continue doing this. I again, I'm not. I I, I I'm gonna just feel out how things go. And then, if I have to make adjustments later, I'll make adjustments. My diligence is going up. I wake up on, to a knocking on my door. At this hour, it can only be one person. I bury my face in my pillow and let out a small groan. I want nothing more than to go back to bed. But I did agree to this. I just didn't think that when Vincent said that he wanted to have the cooking lesson early, he meant this early. I guess there is nothing else to do but man up and do it. I'm up. 
That's a bit of an optimistic evaluation of my, of my situation. But I am eventually able to make good on it and get out of bed. I change my shirt quickly and run my fingers through my hair in a lousy attempt to comb it out a bit before presenting myself to Vincent. That done, I head over to the door and open it. As expected, Vincent is standing there looking as pristine as usual. Sorry to keep you waiting. I was expecting to wait a longer, to be honest. Yeah, I probably should have taken an extra minute to take care of my appearance. Ah, uh, I wasn't complaining. I apologize if it sounded like that. No, it's not that. I was just thinking aloud. Sorry. Anyway, I'll fix it before the actual workday starts. Let's just get this lesson out of the way before the others get up. Right. Vincent nods and the two of us head to the kitchen. I don't have to say anything before Vincent goes over to the cabinets and starts pulling out everything I used the last time. I'm willing to bet that even if I wasn't here to direct him, he'd be able to remember what to do on his own. Ugh, I wish I was that talented. Still, I know he worked hard for it. Much harder than I ever would. I think that's everything. Am I missing anything? Nope. You remembered it all perfectly. In fact, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing here. I'm willing to bet that you already have everything memorized. Well... Vincent fidgets awkwardly. Yes, probably. I blink. Did I hear that right? Oh. Oh, he didn't actually need... Oh... I was half kidding when I suggested it, but I think I remember everything, but I had a few questions and I thought it would be best to have you run me through all the steps just in case. No, he just really, he really likes me. He wants to hug me. He wants to kiss me, which is, I think is very adorable. Mark Vincent is adorable too. I see. You're mad, aren't you? No, well, yes. But that's just because I'd have, I'd have liked to sleep a bit more. I'll get over it. Vincent looks more than a bit upset that he's troubled me. I should have kept my mouth shut. I knew I should have kept my mouth shut. I have to figure out a way how to salvage this. I assure Vincent it's okay. It's fine, really. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked. And I just made things worse. Look, you wanted help, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just... Well, the problem is me. Not you. It's 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 not me. It's you. It's not you. It's me. It's me. It's not you. I don't want you to think that you can't ask me for things, okay? Vincent stares at me for a moment. I'm pretty sure I haven't convinced him, but he'll eventually. He eventually nods in agreement. I want to argue further, but I know it won't go anywhere. I put it in his head that he's a burden, and that's going to take some time to recover from. I sigh and try to move this along. There's not much I can do about it right now. Right. Well, let's get started, okay? We only have so much time to do this. Right. He nods and heads over to the counter to begin. I mostly just watch as Vincent scurries about the kitchen and shows me what he remembers. Occasionally, I'll offer up a piece of advice, but he does fine on his own. By the end of it, he's made a soup that is at least equal to mine, if not better. Is it alright? It's more than alright. It's delicious. I can't think of any way to improve it either. I taste the soup again, trying to come up with some constructive feedback to give him. My mind is drawing a blank, or rather, it's getting too caught up in how good the soup tastes. I think you might have already surpassed mine. I'm sure that isn't true. You're nice to say so, but I know when I'm beaten. I guess I can't and can at least relish the fact that I taught you everything you know. I turn to him and make sure I'm looking in him in the eye for his next bit. Vincent, I've said it before. You're, re you're actually really good at this. I'm serious. If you want to make something else, just make it. With a recipe to follow, you'll do just fine. Don't let doubt get in your way. Vincent blushes slightly before shifting uncomfortably. I think my praise has made him feel a little bit awkward. I would have thought he used to be here, used to be hearing it by now, but then I remember he's working for Lord Sandor. What a waste. If he was my butler, I'd let him know he was doing a good job all the time. Yeah, you need to praise your employees. Like, you need to give them positive reinforcement. I'd also make him take up a, a hobby that wasn't just an excuse to learn a skill that'd be useful to his employer. But I digress. Thank you. He goes quiet for a moment before speaking up once more. Um, Marcel? Yeah? Let's see, how to say this? Vincent mumbles a few incoherent sentences to himself before deciding to just be direct. I got you something. Oh, he does like me and that's so cute. That's a surprise. You got me something? Yes, to thank you for helping me out today and the time before. That wasn't necessary. I know, I wanted to. Anyway, Vincent fumbles around in his coat pocket before producing a silver ring and placing it in my hand. This is for you. If I didn't know Vincent any better, I might have mistaken this for a botched proposal. A ring? Yes. 
Just a quick glance at the ring tells me it's not a cheap one, either. He, uh, I'm not technically an expert, but I'm not a chump, either. This ring is the kind of thing I would have stolen in the past to make ends meet for a while. This isn't something I can accept. It's too expensive, and in any case, I didn't do anything to deserve it. All I did was make soup and give him a few pointers. I'm sorry, Vincent, but I can't. I can't accept this. Vincent frowned, looking quite disappointed. You refuse? Yes, I refuse. This gift... What were you thinking? It's way too expensive. I didn't even do anything to warrant a gift in the first place. Of course you did. You used up some of your free time to do me a huge favor. This is the least I could do in return. No, it's too much. No. It wasn't a huge favor. It was a small favor at best. Perhaps, but you also helped me out before. I'm not sure what I would have done if you hadn't offered to assist me back then. That still doesn't warrant something like this. Lord Sander was already paying me to work. What did I- what I did counted as work. It wasn't necessarily a favor to you. Don't be modest. I'm not being modest, you're being unreasonable. A gift like this isn't something you should be handing out for every small favor. If you're worried about my funds, I- you can rest easy. I don't buy a lot of excess items, so I have a lot saved up. Oh, Vincent. A purchase like this every once in a while won't mean set me back too much. That's not the point, and why a ring anyway? Ah, well, that. At first I thought I should get you a book. You go to the library very often, so I figured you enjoyed reading. See, that would be a little bit more of an appropriate gift, I think. But then I thought you probably always get books from people, since it's the only obvious thing you'd like. That is kind of sweet, actually. That might have been true if I actually knew people who could afford to give me gifts. I wanted to get you something more unusual. So I tried to come up with something different, something that you wouldn't normally get for yourself or from others, which is very sweet. But it's a ring. I didn't have a lot of ideas, though, so I ended up asking some people around town. Most of them suggested jewelry. Why do I get the feeling they thought he was buying it for a woman? Anyway, I checked several shops in town and consulted a few individuals before deciding that this ring was the right thing I thought suited you best. I did have a lot of information to go on, though, so I'm afraid it may reflect my own tastes more than yours. It's so sweet, but I feel like... I think that's a little too much, too soon. However, I figured that even if you couldn't appreciate its aesthetic value, you could appreciate its magical properties. Wait, wait, hold on. Magical prop- Wait a minute. You didn't say anything about magical properties. Alright, Vincent. Spill. What do you mean by magical properties? So it's a magic ring now? That's even worse! Vincent, this is too much! No, no, no! Let him talk! Let him talk myself! <laughs> it's supposed to- Vincent, just stop. I know your intentions are good, but this- I really can't take it. Vincent frowns. I feel a bit bad about making him upset, but I need him to know he can't go around spending this much, especially on someone like me. It's no good then. That's not it. It's a really nice gift. I just don't deserve it. That is where we disagree. You have done a lot for me, and this is the only way I could think of to thank you. If you don't like it, I suppose you don't have to take it, but if you're just holding back because you're worried that you don't deserve it, well, that's for me to judge, isn't it? It's a... it's just awkward for me to accept it, I think. I wanted to do this for you, and it'd make me happy if you accepted it. I sigh and take another look at the ring. Can I really have something like this? Now that I think about it, Vincent doesn't do things half-heartedly. Market stalls, antique shops, gem sellers. He probably checked everywhere and anywhere he could think of. Several shops beyond the point where I would have given up. And to top it all off, he would have spent a great deal of time deliberating each potential purchase. Weighing the pros and cons as if his life depended on the matter? I may not feel like I deserve it, but he didn't do this on a whim. He thought about it for a long time and decided this ring, something that's exceptional, should be mine. That's so dumb. And yet, it's actually really sweet, too. I feel awful. This gift is something to be treasured, and I was ready to dismiss it without a second thought. I closed my hand around the ring, feeling it solid from form dig into my palm. I guess there is no rejecting it now. I want to keep it. Thank you. It's actually really nice. I'm sorry if I seem ungrateful for, I just... No one has ever given me something like this. Vincent finds up noticeably at the moment comment. Again, I'm surprised there was no choice there. I really think there should have been a choice to accept or reject the ring. I don't think that they should have let you assume that Marcel would have accepted it. It is to your liking then? Yes, I like it a lot. Vincent smiles warmly. I just feel like we're taking advantage of Vincent right now, because if we reject it, at least... At least he can return it. And it's like, I wouldn't want us to lead him on. I feel like Marcel is sharp enough to realize, or at least I'm sharp enough, and therefore I'm guiding Marcel. 
clearly Vincent likes him. Clearly. I mean, I don't for a moment believe the whole BS about, oh, I just wanted you to help me with this soup project because I might have some questions. No, he, he was able to make that soup and he just wanted to spend time with me, even though subconsciously, I think that was subconsciously what he wanted. Logically in his head, he was thinking, oh, I need him around, you know, so that I, I can have my questions answered. But subconsciously, he likes Marcel. And I feel like accepting this ring is, regardless how much time and effort he spent on it, accepting it is just going to lead him on. And it's just going to be worse when, if I tell him, I just want to be friends, dude. I like you and you're adorable, Vincent, but I just kind of want you to be friends. I'm glad then. Still, if you ever give me something this expensive again, I'll get angry, okay? I say it so firmly that the declaration startles Vincent. Cheap gifts are just as good, so don't spend such a ridiculous amount of money on me. Once he realizes I'm not scolding him, his expression softens and he gives me another smile. Very well, I'll make a note of it. Oh my goodness. Really, that should have been a choice. That really should have been a choice game. I'm, I'm a little disappointed that that was not a choice. I set a basket of newly bought vegetables on the kitchen counter and turned to the female servant working nearby. Is there a better spot for me to put these? Not really, on the counter is fine for now. Alright then, you've got it from here? Yep, I can take care of the rest. I nod and then head towards the door. She hesitates but then stops me before I leave. Actually, are you free for 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 at the, are you free at the moment? It was Marcel, right? Did you need something? Well, if it's not a bother, Renee usually helps me out in the kitchen, but she begged Vincent for the day off, so I'm kind of on my own right now. So well, I guess I'm asking if you'd help me out. If you have nothing better to do, you don't have to, of course. I mean, I am capable of handling it by myself, but it'd be easier if, yeah, I'll help out. She brightens visibly. Really? Yes, really, Miss. I don't even know your name apparently, because it's not on the it's not on the screen. Thank you so much. I've been here how many weeks, and I still don't know the the servants' names, even though I've said before that Lord Center doesn't have that many servants really, and I still haven't had you know given this girl poor girl the decency of learning her name. Well, maybe she's one of the servants that kind of came and went and just arrived recently. I don't know. It's not really somewhat something worth thanking me over. Oh, but it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I blush a bit in embarrassment as she lays on the praise. It's not like I'm saving her life or anything, so I don't really get what all the gratitude is about. Vincent would just assign me a different task if he found out I was, wasn't was currently working on anything else anyway, so it's not like this isn't more work. That's enough of that. Let's get to work, okay? Okie dokie. She goes over to the table in the middle of the room and starts setting up. As she does this, it occurs to me that I don't know her name. It's a bit embarrassing since she took the time to learn mine, but it's but it is the way it is. I figure I might as well correct the situation as quickly as possible. I'm sorry, I just realized I don't actually know your name. Oh, right. Introductions. My name is Lysia. We've kind of worked together before this, but you probably don't remember. Wow, that that's embarrassing. It wasn't exactly your greatest moment. I guess there's only one event she can be referencing. That, that dinner Lord Sander had with Lord Chiron. She's right about it not being my greatest moment. I really should have learned her name since then. It has been... A, it has been a few weeks since that point. I try to avoid getting caught up in self-pity and instead focus on remembering her involvement. It only takes a minute to recall the memory I'm looking for. You're the one Lord Shiram called cute. And, oh, is she's the one that I also caught in the library? She blushes brightly and covers her face with her hands. Gah, don't say that. You're embarrassing me. Lord Shiram didn't really mean it anyway. At least I don't think he did. Do you think he did? She peeks at me from between her fingers. I know she wants a positive answer, but knowing what I know about Lord Chiron, he might honestly think she is cute, but I doubt he's interested in pursuing anything further with her. In any case, I feel like it's my duty to stop her from getting any ideas. Lord Chiron is trouble no matter how you look at it. Telling her so might prevent some heartache down the line. I think he thinks of a lot of I think he thinks a lot of women are cute. She lets out a sigh and lets her hands drop to her sides. You're probably right. I guess it's still silly getting all flustered over it anyway. There's no way it'd ever work out between Lord Sheeran and a servant like me. Still, why would you want Lord Sheeran? I mean, sure, I guess you could see him as good-looking and wealthy, but he's a total a-hole. <laughs> I'm sure there's more to him. I'm sure... I know these games, so I'm sure there's some redeeming things about Lord Sheeran once you get to know him and you learn more about his backstory and you become sympathetic to him. I don't need to be sympathetic to him right now, though. You know, I don't have to be. 
he's just so good looking. I suppose I can see some validity in that statement. He, well, he isn't ugly by any means. Not my type. Of course, Lord Chiron's appearance is, on, is the only thing he has going for him as far as I'm concerned. He's got less than that for me as far as I'm concerned. Fair enough. Oh, so you agree that he's handsome, do you? She grins evilly, and I have a feeling I'm going to regret making that offhand comment. A rival appears? What? No! So, you're one of those tricky ones that pretends to be friends with the protagonist, but is secretly trying to steal their true love anyway. <laughs> yeah, you're wasting your time, honey. That's not... Then blam, the betrayal comes to light. She changes her voice so it's overly dramatic. Why, Marcel, why? I thought we were the best of friends. Girl, I just learned your name, like, five minutes ago. I sigh. I could keep denying it, but she keeps, she'd keep teasing me. I decided to be more productive just playing along. And if I'm going to do that, I might as well commit to the bit. I cross my arms and give her my best evil smile. You got me. And it's not just Lord Sheeran that I'm after. She gasps. I'm not going to stop until I've romanced every eligible bachelor in this mansion. No. You're taking Kamal and Vincent too? Taking Kamal. And the doctor. Even Borges? You, you monster! I might faint. Oh, this is all so shocking. And what exactly is so shocking? Oh, I whirl around and see Vincent standing in the doorway. My heart stops for a second as I wonder how much of what he what of that he heard. I'm so completely embarrassed I can't even come up with a way to answer his question. This shit doesn't have that problem. Oh, hey a Vin Vin. Vin Vin. I'ma start using that. Vin Vin? She seriously called him Vin Vin just now? Marcel was just talking about how he was going to steal you away from me. Ah, uh, why, Lysia, why? Who is betraying who now? A slight blush creeps on Vincent's cheeks. It's hard to tell who's more embarrassed, me or him. That's well, I don't think... Vincent averts his eyes and mutters to himself in a frustrated manner. It seems he's having trouble coming up with an appropriate response. Not that I can blame him. It takes him a minute, but eventually he's able to straighten his posture and regain some, some of his dignity. Which ultimately means you're not working, correct? She straightens up in turn. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Vincent sighs. Well, stop fooling around and get back to work, okay? You got it, sir. No more distractions. And in the future, please stop calling me Vin Vin. Aw, oh, but it's so cute! You really don't like it? I like I like it, Vin Vin. It's embarrassing. Lysia sighs, looking a bit disappointed. Not even on special occasions? Not even. Alright, alright, if you really hate it that much, you didn't really give it a fair chance, though. It might grow on you. Miss Lysia. Right, sorry I won't use it anymore. Vincent nods and then turns attention to me. I'm trusting you to keep her in line. You two can talk, but work while you're doing it. Doing so, alright? Right. Vincent stares at me for a second and then, asks, and then takes his leave. <sighs> when I'm sure he won't overhear us, I turn to Lysia. Vin Vin? What? You don't think it's cute either? No, that's not it. I just don't believe you called him that. It's okay. Vincent's really nice. He may seem all strict, but that's mostly just with himself. As long as we do our job? Well, and act properly in front of the nobles, he lets small things like goofy conversations slide. Yeah, but all that stuff you said was over the top. I don't believe you actually told him that I was trying to steal him away from you. True, I may have overdone it a bit this time. Poor Vincent looks so embarrassed. She grins evilly. You looked even more embarrassed than he did, though. It was great! I bop her on the head lightly, figuring that's more than fair. Brat. Haha, <laughs> sorry, it was just too funny not to forgive it, not to do it. Forgive me? I shouldn't. But you're going to anyway, right? Maybe. Alright, fine. I forgive you, but I might get you back for this. Ooh, I'm so scared. You should be. Anyway, we're, we're wasting time. We should get to work. Right, right. I guess we did say we would. And we are getting paid for it. There is that. She giggles and opens up one of the cabinets. She pulls out a sack of potatoes and carries over the table before searching the drawers for a knife. So, do you want to be in charge of peeling potatoes or chopping up vegetables? I don't have a preference. Hmm. Well, how about you start with the potatoes since they're ready to go. I'll pick out the vegetables and then get chopping. Got it. I take a seat at the table and rummage through the sack for a potato. I grab a good-sized one and start peeling away the skin with a knife. Lysia takes some carrots from the basket I dropped off on the counter earlier. She washes them off in the sink and then brings them over to the table to start chopping. Is Lord Sandor having soup again today? 
Not exactly. The cook was thinking he'd switch it up and make stew today. Ah, well, I guess that counts as different. Huh, sort of. It's not different enough in my opinion, but maybe Lord Sander will appreciate the change. I'm sure he will. Of course, I doubt I'd be able to tell if even if he did. He has his way of looking grumpy, even if he is enjoying his meal. Yeah, that's kind of depressing. Maybe he just doesn't enjoy anything. Maybe. Hadn't thought of that. You have to forgive him a little, though, considering his situation. I'd probably be grumpy, too, if I was sick all the time. That's fair. I don't really want to talk about Lord Sandor. It is kind of gloomy subject, huh? We could talk about something else, then. Let's see what to talk about. You said you usually work with another servant. Renee, was it? That's right. Does she take the day off to visit family or something? That is the official story. The official story? So there's an unofficial one? Well, you, you can, can you keep your mouth shut? I guess. You know that's not very convincing, right? Well, whatever. I don't think it's a big deal if I tell you. Renee figured it'd be easier to get the day off if she told Vincent she was going to see family, but she really took off to go see a match at the arena. She's a big fan. Really? Yep. I keep telling her that it's an un unladylike interest, but I guess you like what you like. Yeah. Yeah. I like what I like. True enough. Hey, was Renee the girl you were working with that day Lord Sandor had that dinner with Lord Chiron? Yep, that was her. It's only rare occasions like these when we don't get to work together. It gets pretty lonely without her around to nag me. Not that I mind your company or anything. You're actually pretty entertaining. Yeah, that's what Chiron told me. That's good, I guess. Haha, <laughs> yeah, it's good. Management? Manage- oh! Oh! I need to have management. That finishes up our conversation for the time being, and both of us focus on our individual tasks. I peel several potatoes before asking Lysia if that's enough. Huh? You're already done? Yes. Oh my goodness. Now I have to get the other skills up. Oh my goodness. Gah! You are? Why am I so slow? She pouts for a second before assigning me my next task. Okay, so I need to... Oh, I need to speed bump up the other things. Well, you can start cutting them up, I guess, into small squares like this. She takes one of the potatoes and starts cutting it up very carefully. By the time that she's done, she's got a pile of small potato cubes that look like they've been cut by a mathematician. It looks really professional, but I get the feeling I've solved the mystery of why she was so slow. I doubt anyone's actually expecting the potatoes to be cut that perfectly. You're a perfectionist, aren't you? Huh? You cut the potato into perfect squares. She looks over her work and then she seems to realize something. Ah, that's probably why I was so far behind you. Renee always has me peel the potatoes, so I guess I didn't realize how bad I was at this. You're not bad at it, you're just taking a lot of time getting it right. Even if you're working for a pickier lord, that dedication would be good thinking. A good thing. True. Okay, I'm not going to feel bad about it. There's not much point changing it now, but I'll remember that for next time. Sounds good. We both get back to work. It takes us a while to finish, but eventually everything is cut and ready to be thrown to today's stew. I take a minute to look around the kitchen. We finished up our tasks and cleaned everything up. I can't think of anything else we need to do. Well, I guess that means we're done, huh? Yep, I suppose that's what it means. I should probably go find Vin Vin then and see if he's got anything else for me to work on. She grins broadly. I still can't believe he doesn't think that nickname is cute. It's perfect. If he doesn't like it, I guess we shouldn't use it though. You're probably right. I don't think I could call him anything other than Vincent anyway. Vin Vin feels kind of unnatural for a guy like him. Blasphemy. I said it's perfect, and it is. I think it's perfect, Marcel. I don't know what you're talking about. We both let out a laugh. Marcel? Yeah? If you need any help and I'm in, not in the middle of anything important, I'll be glad to return the favor. You don't have to. It really isn't a big deal. I know. I still think it'd be fun, though. So don't hesitate. Yay! We made another friend! Fair enough. And now I realize I need to bump up. Okay, so management is up. I need to get my education and my charisma up too. Stat, apparently. 